Hey everyone and welcome to 121 in Flux, I'm Peter, that is Connor and we talk about movies on this show, not new releases, typically older stuff, although this one is a little bit newer than we typically do because of course we are, we've are we been building up to Alien Covenant coming out and we've been working our way through the Alien movies, we've done 1, 2, 3 and 4 and this of course is going to be Prometheus. Uh, we've not done Alien vs Predator 1 and 2 because we're saving those for the new Predator film next year. Uh, so you can see, see us get to them uh, sometime then. But So this is Prometheus, this is the prequel to Alien. Uh, Ridley Scott directed, he came back to do this one. Uh, he's also done the new one that's coming out. And this is set before, this is about a group of scientists going to find the engineers, the potential creators of life on Earth. And it somehow ties in to the beginning of Alien. <laughs> yeah. Which is, is more obvious when you're watching it, but I feel like when you just say that description, it doesn't sound like it's anything to do with Alien. And, and even the start of the film, because I, I went into this knowing, oh, okay, it's, you know, it's the Alien prequel. Yeah. And yeah. I, I was opening the, the, the very start of the film, I was like, am I watching the right film? Mm. Is, is, is this to do with Alien? Well, but before we go any further, I'll just say we'll start spoiler free, and we will go into spoilers about halfway through. We'll give you a warning before we do so. So, yeah, I think the first thing I want to say, and this this applies to the opening specifically. Regardless of what I'm going to say about anything else, this movie is goddamn gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. All those shots showing those opening titles of uh, uh, it's like just it's just uh. I'm pretty sure it's Scotland. At least the next scene it takes is. place in Scotland, but this yeah. looks also looks like Scotland, uh, just just from what I'm seeing. But they they it's just like the glens and the lake and the 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 mountains and there's one shot specifically of the lake where I'm just like, this looks better than 1080p. It just does. <laughs> it just looks really nice. Yeah. It looks good. Like it's it's visually really good. And it's one of the things that I think Ridley Scott does really well is in these movies that are about these things. He focuses so much on the visuals. And I think this, and also the trailers for Covenant, is that he doesn't, he tries to make everything look real. Like, he, he tries to film real locations, he makes it feel like it's unreal, even if there is CG involved. Whereas, I, I, you'll watch some other movies and you'll feel like they're on a CG planet. Even, even if they're in a place that's not CG at, at, at given moments, it still feels like there's an overall fakeness to everything. I feel like yeah. this is in a real place. We're on a real planet here. And obviously it's always Earth, because we're on Earth, but... Yeah, no, uh, Absolutely. They may change the colours, they may touch it up, but it feels like real places. Uh, yeah. And he does a really good job with that. So, uh, the movie's gorgeous throughout. Uh, but, obviously, you hadn't seen this one. Uh, I had not. So, I guess i start with the question. Uh, <laughs> did you enjoy Prometheus? Uh, I did. I didn't love it, but, yeah, it was alright. Hmm. Of course, I've seen this before. I've seen this one the least out of them, just because it's the newest one. Uh, I saw. Typically how it works. I saw. Saw obviously when it came out. I saw it on Blu-ray. Six months later, maybe a little bit later than that, depending on when I I got it. I can't, I can't remember when I, I bought the Blu-ray. Uh, and that's the last time I've seen it. I've not seen it since then. So it's been five years, something like that, since I've, mm. since I've seen this movie. Maybe four. Uh, so I watched it, and I have to I have to be kind of honest. Uh, my opinion on it's been down a little bit since the last time. Okay. I've seen it. Uh, the stuff I like about it, I still like, but a lot of the things I don't like about it uh, were annoying me more on this viewing. Mm, interesting. And we're making large portions of it a little bit tedious to get through. Uh, I think the biggest thing that this film has... There's two main complaints I have, but the biggest thing I think this film's got going against it compared to the other movies, uh, specifically 1 and 2, uh, as, the, as the good examples of the franchise, is that the characters are kind of dull and don't have much character. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I feel like Alien, the characters are so well defined, I can name most of those characters off the top of my head at any given point if you ask me. Uh, they all feel like well-rounded people that I can I can point to and say, oh, that, this is what Lambert's like, this is what uh, this mm. is what Ripley's like, this is what Kane's like, so on. Uh, Aliens as well. And Aliens has a bigger cast where there is some fodder, but there's still that core like yeah, 8 yeah. to 10 people that I can tell you a lot about. Uh, and this one not really as much. No, that's fair. You got you got a few things for a few of them, but like, I feel like they tried. Like, there's there's two minor characters. Uh, one's played by Benedict Wong. There's like two. They're both like they they work in the the bridge, and mm. there's like a line early on about them having a bet about what they're going to find, and then there's another line near the end of the film where they reference having a bet, 
And I'm like, that is literally all you gave me with these two characters, is that they had a bet. Yeah, those are probably the most disposable pair of all of them. Yeah, and th- that really stuck out to me, uh, those two. And then the rest, because it's... This movie's got a great cast. It's it's lined up from start to finish mm, with p- people. We've got Numi Rapace uh, from uh, the original Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. This was uh, one of the first sort of uh, English speaking films I'd seen her in. We got Michael Fassbender. We got Charlie Steron. We got Idris Elba. We got Guy Pearce. Uh, I didn't know him at the time, but Logan Marshall Green's in this. Uh, who I now know from Quarry and The Invitation. Uh, he's really good. We have Spells in this. Uh, even even Kate Dickey. She's, she's, she's the Scottish woman. She was in The Witch. Uh, so mm. she's popped up in all stuff. So there's a lot of faces in this, uh, and yeah. So and I feel like that's because it is Ridley Scott, and because it is an Alien movie, like they all want to do this. It's, it's like, got yeah. it's got a reputation around it now. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think my big my biggest problem is the characters. My second problem is that some of the monster stuff, while I enjoy it, feels very generic. Mm, okay. I feel like the, you know the, the xenomorph, the, the alien design from the previous films is very unique. It's part of what I love about that, and to an extent, Predator as well. Obviously, we'll do Predator movies next year, but is they have very unique designs. They feel like really well thought out creatures. Whereas some of the stuff in this, it feels like ah, it's an LCG monster that could be yeah. Okay, anything. I get you. Uh, and I'm not necessarily talking about the engineer. I actually think the engineer is the part of the movie I like. I like uh, building into the mythology. I'm actually, I'm not necessarily all that fussed about the whole idea that they they created us, like the whole idea that we came from them, uh, but just the idea of how they connect to how the alien was created, I do, I find really interesting. I really like their connection to us in the context of this movie due to, there's a lot of big themes of faith and religion in the mm. movie, and that connection, uh, it plays into that quite nicely for me. Oh, sure. I, I just mean the larger scheme of things of the alien universe, like, like, I don't feel like it maybe really fits with the rest of it. Yeah, that's fair. Like, but it, doesn't, think... it doesn't ultimately matter either, I don't think. Well, it doesn't. It just it just doesn't feel like... I don't know, it just feels a bit out of place. And technically, I mean, you could argue, oh, that's why it's not called Alien. But at, at the same time, there's, it's an Alien prequel and there's things that are leading to Alien yes. in it. Uh, including a couple of confusing things, which we'll get to in spoilers, that I want to point out. <laughs> Some decisions that were made that I, I'm not sure why they were made, and it just kind of muddies things up a little bit in terms of what the intention is. How you, you'll know this better. I know what year this is set in. How long before Alien is this? Do you know? Uh, I can't remember the exact year. It's not. It's not a massive amount. I, 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 I don't know the exact years off the top of my head, but I think Alien and Aliens. Well, I'm literally they're fifty years apart, but I think Aliens like twenty one something. Right. Okay, that's a lot closer than I thought. Like, I, I don't know. Do you want me to look it up? I'll, I'll find out, hon. <laughs> I'll find out. Because uh, I, I want to know. Yeah, uh, just because I know this was like 2093, I think, by, by the, for the most of the movie. Yeah, because the first scene in Scotland's... A uh, few years before that. 2089. I and I remember that because it's, it's, exa- it's exactly 100 years after my birthday. Like, if, if, I, lived, if I lived to be 100, that'll be... When I'm a hundred, is that you? Yeah. So you know when when people play the game of oh that's that's the stuff of this movie this year, uh, you, you'll get to your hundredth year and you go oh this is where Prometheus starts. Uh oh, it's even earlier than I thought it was. Oh, Alien. According to my quick Google search, Alien is set in twenty one twenty one. Right. So that's only what thirty years. Yeah, thirty years after this. Hmm. Okay. I thought it was much more than that. Yeah. Uh, also, one thing to notice is, is that the company Wayland Yutani is not Wayland Yutani. It's just Wayland. They've not merged. Yet. Yeah. Yutani is still a separate thing. Uh, I I almost want a political, not a political, a sort of business espionage movie of, as to why why do Wayland and Yutani come together? What? Yeah, yeah. What what what, what forces that merger? But uh, no, I, I noticed that when I was watching it. I was yeah. like, th- it's those sorts of things that made me think it was uh, further in the past. I think. Okay. At the same time, though, because we have an android in the film, because it's not a spoiler to say that uh, Michael Fassbender's character, David, he's he's an android. Because that technology is so similar to the androids in the other films, it kind of has to be relatively yeah, yeah, close that's by. True. Which, of course, one of the small complaints you can have about the movie, though, is why does all the other technology look way more advanced than anything in any of the other movies? Because, I'll be honest, if I was making a prequel to Alien, or if I was making something set in the Alien universe... I would I would make all the things feel like I, I would have CRT monitors. I would have that retro future 
feel to it. Yeah, like the, the greenish lights to everything. Yeah, I would have all of that. Yeah, yeah, I would too. Yeah. Does feel weird, especially like you know, some of the the medical capabilities feel like really futuristic. Yeah, I think I think they tried to justify it at the time in the movie was coming up with saying, "Oh, it's a science ship. They're all they're all scientists and explorers. It's you know, whereas in Alien, it's a you know, it's a cargo ship basically." And that, yeah. that was kind of justification, but there's still some of the stuff that feels a bit weird. Like just just even something as simple as the interface for the computers is like, no, nah, this is like. Yeah, yeah. I think what for me is what made me feel like it was much further like before Alien than this is I didn't get the sense that they'd mastered space travel, that this was, you know, like an everyday occurrence. This still felt like it was a relatively special voyage. Yeah, it it, it does. It does kind of feel like that. Uh, but I don't necessarily think it is though. Like when I'm if, no. I'm if I'm really thinking about it, like going out this far is maybe special, going to this planet's special, but I feel like local space travel's probably already a thing. It, it must be, yeah. Yeah. I imagine it is, um, but th- th- that's so. Uh, so I think some of the monster designs are a little bit generic, and it feels like a bit more of a generic. And the structure to the stories are is, is a little bit weird as well. Uh, mm. But like I say, I actually do enjoy a lot of the the monster stuff that goes on. I, it's a dumb monster movie, and it is dumb. Some of these characters do some really stupid things. They do over the course of this film. Uh, which is actually probably the biggest complaint that other people had when it came out is, oh, these scientists are the worst scientists in the planet. Like, there's there's one in particular I'll talk about in in the spoiler section, but I really like it, even though it's a stupid thing. I love how it plays into the themes. Okay, okay. Uh, so, yeah, that, that, that's kind of that's kind of my problems. I do I do like some of the mythology stuff though. When it starts like, because obviously being a prequel to Alien, you think, all right, the space jockey, we're going to get space jockey stuff. What is the space jockey? How? And when it starts playing into some of that stuff, I get really interested. I like exploring them. I like some of the where it goes at the end, kind of in parts of it. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm putting a lot of qualifiers here. It's it's just because of everything I liked. I feel like there's something else that's kind of that I don't like tacked on to it. That that's fair. Uh, and I was feeling that a lot more in this one. Mm, uh, okay. This this time watching it, I mean, so. Uh, no, so that's kind of where I am. Uh, like I say, it's gorgeous throughout. I don't know if it has the same intrigue that something like Alien does, despite the fact that this is a group of people who are going there to discover things. It doesn't actually feel it anywhere nearly as uh, exciting or as mysterious as Alien did. No, and I think that might be because they set out with the intention of dis- like they're looking for something in specific from the start, hmm. whereas in Alien it just kind of stumbles across it whereas they're going looking for answers anyway so i don't think the intrigue works because of that for me yeah i guess ultimately i don't really care why though <laughs> it, just yeah, yeah. it just isn't as intriguing like there's so much mystery in alien which is which is kind of it brings up the question like do we need prequels to it do we need to explain all of it and i i don't think we do i actually like the mystery but at the same time i think it's so fascinating as to what is this ship where did it come from uh who was flying it like those things are really interesting, but it puts all this other stuff into it, and like I'm like, okay, I don't know if I need to know how Everything. we get to yeah. this. Like part of the mystery of aliens, what makes it so fun? Uh, but at the same time, I do actually, I'm really interested in what the space truck is. So uh, parts of it I like exploring, some of it um, I don't really like exploring as much. Uh, but I'm dancing around things now, so let's let's go into some just, spoilers. Oh, go on. I was gonna say I really like that the music. It does a lot of cool things. Yeah, it's interesting. I think it very intentionally has similar feelings to the main theme in Alien, but it goes it into does, yeah. it goes into more of a wondrous, like a intentional sort of thing. Like because they're going to look for things, it starts off similar to Alien, but it goes into a more hopeful kind of thing. Yeah, it, it's more sure of itself instead of playing up the mystery like mm. Alien does. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, yeah, and also one of the things I said about how everything looked real. Uh, for the most part that was true about the locations once some of the CG monsters started to pop up it, they started to jar a little bit for me visually with mm. everything else because everything felt so authentic that, yeah yeah, that's fair uh, but yeah so let's get to spoilers so full spoilers from this point on for Prometheus uh, so let's, let's just tackle the big things first let's tackle the, 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 the alien sort of biology and the mutations and kind of what appears to be the steps towards the creature that we know of in the alien universe. 
because obviously we have this this black goo that the the engineers use presumably to engineer life because we see it the, the, the prequel scene at the start and uh, the flashback uh, to the dawn of time basically <laughs> when the engineer's on earth and he dropped he, he, well, he actually eats uh, some of this black goo and he disintegrates into the water and that, that seems to be the 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 blossoming of earth life life yes. as we know it came from this everything mutated from this in the water which makes sense because we we also know that uh, water life is much older than uh yeah, like, yeah. you know mammals and stuff like that like water life has been around for longer like f- fish were around during the dino- time of the dinosaurs as far as i i know i'm sure yeah, someone with l- a much- life began in the war yeah i'm sure someone with a much better understanding of all this biology and uh history can come in and correct me but at least for my basic understanding that that adds up so they have this goo uh, and when it interacts with life it 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 does stuff it it creates new things it does wacky things uh, and it's David, and we'll get to like David's role in the movie, but he he gives it to, uh, what's the character's name? Charlie, which is Elizabeth Shaw's uh, character's husband or boyfriend, uh, played by Naomi Repatri. Uh, and they have sex after he's been infected with this. He he eventually then gets sick and he's infected, and they they, they kill him because they don't want it to spread. Uh, Charlie Steron lights him up with a flame flower, mm. uh, as you do. And she discovers the next day that she's pregnant. And it, she's already like three months pregnant, and it's also a big deal because we she's told us that she can't get pregnant. Yeah, there's, there's a whole thing about because they're talking about creating life, and her husband's like, "Ah, oh, creating life's easy if you know what you're doing." Because they're because because they keep pointing out that David's been created by them, like they've kind of created life by this point, mm. and she sort of says, "Oh, I can't create life." And obviously, there's a difference between uh, giving you know having a child and creating a new life form, but we're talking about engineering a new, there's that word again, yeah. engineering. Uh, engineering a new species is a different thing, but uh, you, you can theoretically, he, he says it's easy, relatively speaking. Uh, but the, so she's got this thing inside her and we've been introduced to this, this uh, fancy medical pod that can automatically do things and procedures. And she realizes there's something else inside her and she, she fights her way to this, this pod and she gets it, Taking out with a laser, it's in our in our, our room, and something really weird about that pod actually. She she asks it to just perform a C section, mm-hmm. and it's like now we're only calibrated for male patients. Oh, I get but, that. That's because uh, Whalen's on the trips for him. Sure, but it's it's maybe specifically for him. But there's a lot of women on the crew in general. Would they, it, it? It seems weird that it would. Okay, lock. it's not it's not for them though. It's not for the crew. Yeah, I I but got they, that because that that was is essentially. The reason why, uh, like, uh, Vickers, uh, Charlie Sterling's character, she has, like, her own lifeboat sort of section that has her own life support and all that, uh, and that's where this is. I, I took that as, that's really more for, that's all for Waylon more than it is for her. Like, mm, it's okay. under the guise that it's for her, but it's really for him. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah, that, that's that's what I was taking from that. Because they, cause they mentioned that there's only, like, so many of those things made, so I'm like, okay, he's the trillionaire, so he's the one who's yeah, bought it, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but so this this sort of squid thing comes out and it's like kind of disgusting and whatever, uh, and it's it's left there. It's almost like we kind of ignore it after that scene. <laughs> like it, the movie kind of forgets about it, so you know that it's going to come back later. Like it's going to be a rele- relevant later. Yeah. So the whole idea that she gives birth to something that's been put inside her, uh, almost like the path to the alien species is also through human beings. Like this whole yes. idea. Uh, so later on, when the engineers coming after her and they're in this part of the ship and. To save herself from the engineer, she opens the door, and this thing's growing bigger. So again, the idea that this came out of her, and it's growing bigger really quickly, like you know, in a few hours, a, a day maybe, or whatever, is how long it's been. Uh, now, this is obviously where you get excited if you're an alien fan because you realise when it's grabbing the engineer. Wait a minute, this is this a giant face hugger? This feels like a giant face hugger, and it goes into his mouth like a face hugger does, and it it essentially does that. And it, really, it's all just set up for the post-credit scene. Well, it's not post-credit, but but it's it's the little tag scene before the credits play, yeah. uh, where it basically has a kind of a chest buster esque thing, and the the, yeah. the beast that comes out of him is not quite a, the xenomorph that we know, but it's kind of forming the mouth starting to come out. Kind yeah, of thing. It, tr- it tries to do its its long inner mouth tongue thing, and it only goes out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so obviously that's building up the idea, and this is where I'm kind of like I don't. I don't think I need to know how the alien mutated to be an alien. And I'm sure this is going to be relevant. I'm sure if I make a guess for the next movie, for Covenant, someone in that movie is going to be the first queen. Because we have to get to eggs. We don't have eggs yet. (laughs) 
Yeah. I think it's interesting, just while we're on that, that Covenant isn't named Prometheus 2. That's because Prometheus 1 didn't wasn't that successful. It was okay yeah, like, yeah. in terms of financials. They like no, Fox like no. If you're doing more aliens in the title, pretty pretty much. And there's a goddamn alien in the movie, right? <laughs> so I think that's why that is. But yeah, so I, I don't. This is where I'm like, okay, this is maybe like. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not. It's not like because you know, one of my big problems with the Star Wars prequels, just as the, the big famous example of prequels being shit, right? Is that it demystifies a lot of things in the original movie? I don't think this demystifies the alien. I, I don't think it makes it any less intimidating or anything like that by knowing that it because everything in this movie is still dangerous. Like every single yeah. creature is like full on. I will kill you, uh, including the engineers. And but because guess what Star Wars did? Star Wars kind of takes Darth Vader and it's like, oh, he's he's now he's now all I can think of is Hayden Christensen talking about sand whenever I see Darth Vader on screen. Like, you've kind of You've taken the mystery out of the character. Uh, like it doesn't do that, but it. I just like. I don't really need to know, like how many mutations the alien goes through and stuff. Like it was kind of fun the first time viewing because I was like, oh, this is like a face hugger and this is this. But I'm all, I'm only excited because I'm reckon it's, it's it feels like fan service more than it does like essential yeah. story, uh, and I think that's a bit of an issue. Where I'm really interested though in terms of the mythology. If we're going to expand things, it's like the the, the playback. I don't know why the holograms playing back. Admittedly, I, it never really justified why the hologram started playing for me. But uh, we see this hologram of these like in in their sp- full space jockey outfits. The engineers running through the shit like something's going wrong. Like one of their life forms is like they've accidentally created something that's too dangerous for them to control, yeah. and they're that's what's killed them off. And obviously, we'll get the one live one alive in the uh, the, the, the the cryo chamber, but. Uh, like this is where it gets interesting for me. It's like the, the engineers like doing their thing and them having these depots and the fact that the the creatures and and this goo are weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. Uh, because. Uh, well, it... Oh, go on. I was just gonna say I find it interesting that the engineers created something so different to them. Whereas obviously we see them create humans and the idea that the the DNA is even the same and like we're, well, we're made in their image. Well, that makes that makes sense though because it, it mixed with them. Because the guy, the one engineer takes it and everything yeah. spawns from them. Yeah, exactly. Which, but I figure that's how they, you know, that that was their process. Yeah. Well, like I say though, the aliens. I so, well, I mean, because this movie kind of murkins it up because it kind of implies the alien creation is kind of an accident. Like the alien as we know it is an accident rather than an intentional yeah. thing. But the the way I understood it, and the way because this is funny, because back in the nineteen ninety nine uh, DVD, uh, there was a Ridley Scott commentary track. And he talked in that contract, well, and this is obviously like 13, 14 years before Prometheus happened, he talks in that contract what he thinks this ship is, and what the alien is, and he calls it a weapon of mass destruction, and that whoever had this ship, and now we know that's the engineers, were, this was a weapon for them against something else. Hmm. Yeah. Actually, I read a really cool theory on the internet uh, once, this, this is not an official thing, this is just some fan had this crazy idea, that if you combine the thing, have you seen the thing? Yeah, if you combine that universe with the alien universe, there was this weird theory that the engineers created the alien species because it's the only thing that could fight the thing. Because the <laughs> thing tries to assimilate everything it touches. Yeah, uh, I, I did like, like obviously it was propositioned at one point that that maybe the aliens were there to clean up the mistakes, R- yeah. rather than being a, a weapon of mass destruction. They're just a cleaning device. It's going, oh, okay, nope, that didn't work. Well, Let's I mean, just cl- clear up. It's kind of the same thing. It is, it is, but you you know what I mean. Uh, they, I mean, their attitude about it is maybe a bit different, but it's essentially the same thing. It's a weapon that will kill life. Yeah, the, the the ultimate purpose is the same, but just the the motivation of it, I think, is is what's different there that makes it stand out for me. Because I mean, if you if you've got a cage full of lab rats and you take a flamethrower to it, that's a weapon of mass destruction to those rats. Okay, let me put this way: with weapon of mass destruction, it's more. The, the the enemy can fight back. It's you know there's actually like yeah you know, there, there's okay, a threat. Sure, Whereas sure. here it's just like clean up. It's just disposal. It's just it's just an efficient way of cleaning. Okay, sure, but again that's a perspective thing. That's just from their point of view. Yeah. To us, that's still a weapon of mass destruction. Like it's still this yeah, devastating yeah. thing that will completely wipe out life. Because uh, that's ultimately the threat at the end is they realise that this ship, the, the, this this stash of uh, weapons was supposed to go to Earth. So yes. where they go in there to clean up their mistakes, and that plays into the themes of the movie and all that. Um, 
But I kind of like the idea, I always like the idea in Alien that the aliens themselves were the weapon. Like, they were designed to be, like, unstoppable. Yeah. Uh, and obviously that this ship crash landing. Now here's something to point out. This is something that confused the show at me at the start of this movie when I seen it in the cinema. Actually, so when they, they mention where they're going, because they're in the sort of the basketball area. Which, by the way, I I laughed when I was watching it this time because I was like, wait a minute, basketball again? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is this going to be a running thing now? There's basketball in all the future Alien movies. David's doing his twirls and just dunking. You know, not dunking it, but he's, he's doing like three pointers while he's on a bike. From like across yeah. the hall, uh, although unlike Alien Resurrection, I'm convinced there's CG involved in this shot. Like, I'm in Resurrection, I'm pretty sure Sigourney Weaver had to nail that shot, that that yeah. from behind shot. Whereas here, I'm like, nah, they just CG'd the ball in. Probably the magic, the magic's gone. Like, <laughs> I'm seeing behind the curtain. It's too easy now. Maybe, but but Fassbender, he's he's a very talented man. He is a very talented man. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't put it past him. I, I don't know if. Uh, uh, basketball shots whilst on a bike is part of his skill set, though. I wouldn't put it past him. Anyway, uh, where was I going? I was going to make a point. Oh yeah, the confusing thing for me. So, so they explain they they get the the couple up, Shaw and Charlie, to explain why why they're there. They're looking for engineers. We found these things in caves. All these different civilizations all had the same pattern for, for the stars, and so it's clearly a map to go there. Uh, a little bit of two thousand one there. You know, they're they're challenging yeah. us to come and find them. Uh, which they're not. It turns out the engineers don't give a shit about anyone. They're just coming back to wipe us out. But, uh, but again, so the thing that confused me, so the, the show where they're going, right, it's a, it's a planet uh, near this gas giant and I'm like, oh, right, here we go. This is, this is going to be the, the, the one from Alien. This is, you know, LV426. And then it came up saying, LV223. I'm like, what? Yeah. Why? Why is it not the same one? This is stupid. Because cause obviously I got into this movie. I'm, and I'm see, I've seen the trailers. I'm like, okay, we're going we're going to get that ship. We're going and we're going to see it crash. It's going to crash, and that's going to be the one they, they find an alien years later. Yeah. Right. I thought it was going to be more directly tie in. Instead, at the end of the movie, no, 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 no. We've not got to aliens yet. The, 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 the ship, one of the ships actually does crash. It crashes on almost in a very similar way to the the ship that they find an alien, but it's on a different planet. So it's not yeah. that's not the one we find. No. So we have that. We end the movie with uh, David's head and Shaw flying off to find where the engineers come from. Yes. <laughs> and that's how we end the movie. And it's like, oh, right, okay, so this didn't even remotely get us to Alien. We, we have bits in between to get to. And honestly, for a couple of years, it felt like we weren't even going to get that. It didn't feel like we were going to get another one. Uh, yeah. So. No, I, I get that. I don't know if I have such a problem with that i mean it's it's told me okay these are what these ships are this is you know what this race is i don't need to do i need to see the specific one like you know you were saying how you don't need to see everything i get what it is now in in concept when i go back and watch alien i'll go oh that's one of those do i need to see that specific one crash there you don't need to my problem is though is that it feels like the movie was kind of building up to it and then it kind of does a very similar thing like it has a ship crash it, it, it does all these things these te- teasing things it felt like this was at least get into it when it came out it felt like this was going to be the point of the movie it's an alien prequel so it's going to be building up to alien uh, and I think the problem I have at the ending is I feel like the ending's really kind of weak like it doesn't feel like an ending to me it, like they fly off in the search of this thing, and I'm sure there'll be some follow up in Covenant. But like watching the trailers for Covenant, I'm like, like, I, and I, I know, I know, I know the actors are in the movie. I know, I know we're going to see them, and I know there was a, a prologue scene that came out uh, last week, and I, I watched that, and that was interesting. But like, I don't know. It's just, it, it's such a weird thing. Is is that prologue scene? Is it actually like the opening of the movie, or is it a separate extra? I have no idea. Okay. Just just wondering if I should bother watching it. But it's Shaw and David that's in it. Right, okay. Oh, okay, that means I don't need to be looking for another Android with the that starts with the letter E. I've noticed. All the all the Androids. Oh yeah. A yeah, B yeah, C yeah. D. Um You might though, cause there might be a new model of him as well on because I think there's a new version of him with the, the main ship in the new movie. Right. Well if there's a character that begin you know, their name begins with an E. <laughs> yeah, keep your eye out. That's fair. 
uh, I don't know. I, I think for me, it just like the way it ends. I'm like, uh, and I felt this way again watching it. Watching it this time, I was just like, ah, this is how it ends. That's right. Yeah, they, they fly off in the search for because I, I don't know. This, this whole it just kind of goes back to the, the whole idea that we're looking for our creators and we want to confront them. And ultimately, by the end of the movie, it's a it's a case of oh, I want to know why they thought we were a mistake. That's kind of where she she turns because like, yeah. she's she wants to find answers, and then when it finds out, she finds out like. Oh, uh, they want to just dismiss us. They, they're uninterested in us. We were, we, were, we were a mistake to them. They wanted to wipe us out. Now she wants answers for that. Like, why? And David's like, well, does it matter why? And, like, uh, and I just, I, I don't know. Like, I, f- I feel like I went in wanting an alien movie. And it didn't have to actually be the aliens. Like, a space jockey movie, also good. But at the end, I just kind of felt like, so that's what the focus of this was. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I really had that problem. I I, I kind of do. I, like, I, I, I I get it. She flies off. She she's found purpose in knowing that you know like okay we were discarded and she's she's found purpose from that. Here's my problem though. It feels like the story's just starting at the end. Well, the next story's just starting. Yeah, this story was go. I don't know. I don't. Have this I, I, I I just feel like there wasn't much story in this one it's it's weird like i feel like it's all build up and then there's no payoff it just and maybe we'll get the payoff in the new movie and that that'll be cool mm. but i it just it, it it feels like everything about this is setting up a new set of movies and it just it kind of bothers me <laughs> because say what you want about all any even the the, the, the weaker alien movies the the full movies where you beginning middle and end and you feel like you've gotten a, a full chapter yeah yeah uh, and I don't feel that here. I feel like it's all teasing, and then so you you have the, the two problems. You have too much of like prequel stuff. I don't I think we need an alien prequel really. I mean, just give me a new alien movie with different characters. Uh, give give me Ripley's daughter or whatever. Uh, which by the way, other prediction for Covenant: someone's Ripley's mother or something. <laughs> like we're going to find out someone's name is Ripley or a cousin or something. Yeah. Okay. I I'm calling it. it. I'm calling it. The the main chick's very Ripley looking as well. I, I feel like they're going to pull a... Yeah, I can see that. Uh, they, they'll have a nickname for her. They'll be calling her the nickname the whole movie and then so, so what's her actual name? It's like, um... Something M- Ripley. M- yeah. Meredith Ripley. Meredith, that's what you go with. I don't know why it's the first name I went to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I think yeah, I think ultimately the focus on the creation of life for me just feels like it belongs in another franchise. I I think I think ultimately that's kind of where I felt watching this again this time. See, this is I didn't have that problem. I liked exploring that aspect. It didn't bother me that if it was in this universe or not. It was just I'm interested to see the these themes played like this. I think I think the problem is is because I didn't like the characters that much. I didn't really get into what they cared about. Yeah. So I never. It felt kind of thin. So ultimately, what I like about this movie is just as a B monster movie. I really don't care about what it's trying to say. That's fair for me. I think like I actually think the themes of you know searching for like the the idea of life ties in quite nicely with the alien movies because a lot of that is is about motherhood and you know birth. So this mm. takes it to its roots at a literal level for the prequel. So that works for me. I mean, part of it may just be my own. Like, I don't really care where we came from. Like, I just I don't have that 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 inkling in me. I just don't yeah, give a shit. Uh, so, but just I just don't find the characters that interesting. So I don't care if they want their answers. So because you know after they go down the first time, and it seems like oh it's just another tomb. Because that's something that uh, Charlie says. It's just another tomb. Like I thought we'd find them and whatever. And he starts drinking because he's disappointed. And I'm like. Am I supposed to care that you're disappointed? Am I supposed to care when you're burned alive uh, because you're infected? Because I didn't. No, I can't say I cared that much about those things either. Yeah, I, d- I didn't. Uh, David's kind of interesting. Yeah, I think he's really interesting. The idea that, you know, when we meet him and he's he's watching the movies and learning how to be a person. And he's, he's modelling his hair after David Bowie and uh, Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah. I, I liked that that sort of aspect to him. That really gave him some depth. As yeah, he's an android, but it's like the way he's 
trying to act more like a person even when you know when he puts on the, the suit to go outside and they ask him it's like well you don't need that and it's like yeah but to fit in it's the sense of belonging they, they honestly the one thing that i did like technology wise that felt like it was a bit more primitive was the cryo sleep because they all felt sick after they woke up whereas in the other movies they were just kind of groggy. yeah yeah, yeah. like that's, true. That, that's the one thing that feels like they they specifically said no this is worse than what it was in the others uh, so that was a yeah. nice touch i appreciate that uh but yeah, so um, here's, here's a problem that I know a lot of people have, and I kind of have it as well. <laughs> see, see, towards the end when the uh, the alien ship's coming down after yeah. Idris Elba and his crew have sacrificed themselves to stop it from getting to Earth. Why don't which, they just run to the side? Yeah, just run. Yeah, just. I feel that, that that's not unique to this movie. I feel that in every time there's something falling like that, never run, they never run. No, to the but side. see, see the thing with the other stuff though, like. At least in other, other situations when it's a building or something, it feels like the thing's wider. So I get they don't think they can make it in time. But this is such a, a thin, relatively speaking, yeah. ship that's rolling towards them. And the, the thing that makes it worse is that then Shaw does it. Shaw does it in front of Charlie Theron's character, and then she still doesn't do it. Do, do you know what? Okay, here's how I was justifying it at the moment. Don't get me wrong, it is a problem. It bothered me as well. The only way I could justify it is that they were going, right, okay, this is going to stop rolling at some point and it's going to fall. And they're going, if we can keep running before it falls, we're safe. But if we move to the side and then it falls, you go splat. And because it's curved, you might not, you know, no matter where you run to, you might still end up at it. So, yeah, the scientists are idiots. Like, yeah, we should we should probably talk about some of the other stupid stuff they do. Yeah, they they, they keep they, they touch things they shouldn't be touching. The no sense of like protocol or safety. <laughs> yeah, the one that I think a lot of people would you know I, I assume what people were bothered by, but I quite like is you know when he takes off the, his helmet. Aye, I really like that because again it's this this act of faith, this leap of faith that he takes <laughs> in in the opinions and the, the the data and his his own you know ideas. It kind of ties in with the themes again for me, that one. A lot of the others are just stupid, though. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I can... I can kind of... I can kind of let that one go, because it, it, it at least works from a character perspective, because he's, it's his own... Uh, exactly, yeah. Sort of arrogance, almost. It's like, oh, I must be right. The stupidity of the characters doesn't bother me so much if it's just a dumb monster movie, and that's kind of how I treat this one. Uh, it's a dumb monster movie that's a little bit too long, actually. Because uh, mm. uh, that, that was another thing that... Is that I thought the uh, there was something overly simplistic about the design of where they land. Like they they literally land in a straight line in front of the place to keep going to, and then they go to and from that place multiple times. Yeah. Uh, it, it just it felt really simple, <laughs> in that sense. Mm, okay. I don't know. It, it was just no, like you know, any alien. And I I don't mean to just keep comparing it to the alien, but like, the, the, you know, they land the, the, the drop ship and they, they have to go hunting to find the, the ship that they, they had the signal for and it feels because it's night because it's smoky they're, they're, they're searching there's a sense of whatever we're in this movie they literally get into the planet and within two minutes go hey that looks like it was built and they land in front of it yeah yeah the idea that, it, that that's kind of why it excuses that it's straight because that was the whole purpose because that's how they tell oh no I know but I, I just there was something just so uninteresting about the whole the, just yeah. the, the way they just land in front of this thing and then the whole movie is them going to and from this one location there's yeah no, yeah that, that's very fair there's no sense of varying things up or whatever and mm. uh yeah and i'm not gonna lie guy pierce and old age makeup for uh the wayland who's there uh also didn't really work for me <laughs> all that much no. it just felt a bit silly when he like popped out and he had all this old makeup on yeah and... yeah i was wondering is there a reason they they you know had to cast someone and put the silly amount of old age makeup was... on instead of just casting someone older there was a viral video that went out where he was younger before the movie came out where yeah but yeah but they, they didn't plan that for that surely because they'd have just gone well let's not just they, they, they didn't go all right we're going to cast someone Connor, young i'm just telling you what him... happened no, I'm, I'm i don't just know saying, there is no way they cast someone younger to make him look older just for the sake of going, we can do a viral video later. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe maybe they had thoughts that they might do a, a prequel prequel where they'd have him be younger. I don't know. But maybe. Yeah, it's Guy Pearce and old age makeup. Yeah, uh, it was kind of goofy. And everything with, with him I wasn't super into. There's, there's just a lot of things about them. Do you know what it is? It's just, there's a lot of just core ideas that I just don't feel. Hmm. Uh, 
and it, it's kind of weird. And I'm not saying you can't set a movie in the Alien and Predator universe and not, have it not be horror. Even though this does go down the horror route eventually, because the monsters start killing them. And there's it's quite late on when it does, though. Yeah, uh, it it just I don't know something. There's fundamentally about some of the ideas that just doesn't feel quite right. It just doesn't sit. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and, when you, and that would be okay probably if the characters were interesting and they felt developed and I cared about what they were trying to do but instead it's very on the surface they, they just kind of we're introduced to these characters that start they're in a cave and they look at a, a mural and they're like oh we're happy and they, they hold hands because they're, they're going off to fight like I feel like yeah they drop one line about her not being able to have kids but I, and there's like that one scene of her with her dad where you know David's looking at her dreams at the start yeah but that's kind of it. There's like very little, like character, with her. Oh no, absolutely. And she's the main character, and that's how much we get at her. Everyone else is even less. Yeah, yeah, that that's fair. There's characters are probably the weakest part of it for me, where, yeah, they're all kind of throwaway. And that's not to say you need a lot of information per se, because I think if you look, again look at Alien, I don't think you get a lot of information about any of those characters, but you feel like you know who they all are. They they feel familiar with each other. You get little things from the performances, little ticks, the way they interact with each other. Whereas in this, it just kind of feels like a bunch of uh, stock characters. It feels like a bunch of stock, kind of, you know, here's, here's like, they, they try and develop, not develop, but they try and give, like, you know, there's an American and a British guy with a ginger beard who kind of argue with each other and they're, they're not very happy. But there's nothing memorable about them. Yeah, no, that that's fair. Part of it is, I wonder if, because obviously these are just a, they're a, a crew, but they're not really a team. They don't really know each other that well beforehand. It does. I never got that impression. Mm. Other than like, you know, the couple of connections that are there. Whereas with Alien, it's like, th- these are uh, people who you know work together on a daily basis. That That's like, that, that's their crew. Well, Aliens, sure, but... it's your unit. Well, fine, but, like, I mean, Ripley integrates with the, the Marines in the second one, and you can yeah. do... Like, that's what you that's what you spend some of your screen time on. If, if they spent more time in the first half of this movie letting the characters, like, get to know each other and bond... Like, even the fact that they, they wake up out of cryosleep and they've barely met each other, and, like, most of them don't even know why they're there. Like, they've taken this job without yeah. knowing what the job even is, uh, and they explain it to them at that end of the trip. It's just kind of like... Well, Give them time to like get to know each other. I feel like I agree. I, I, I don't know. It's weird. I feel like so the the whole thing is this exploration to this planet where they're and we we, we get we get the one little prequel scene where they they find the thing in the cave, but that's it. There's no build up to it. I feel like if since if this is about discovery, if this is about them chasing this dream of finding these answers, like I feel like they have to earn it. Whereas we just sort of start the movie and they're already there at the planet. It works in Alien. It works in Alien because they stumble upon something. They're woken up out of sleep. It's, it's a surprise. It's like, what is this? What's going on? Yeah. And and here, it's this is their goal. They've been working to it for years. And you want to you wanna understand, get inside their mind beforehand and appreciate that they've found their goal. Whereas yeah. you don't have that. Yeah. They're, they're just there at the start of yeah. the movie, pretty much. Yeah, they're, they're, absolutely. They're already there. So therefore, it's like, okay, well, this, this as a viewer, this felt easy. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. Uh, so, whereas an alien, it, it works that they just wake up and like, what, what's going on? There's a distress beacon. It, you know, everything again. It's it's all built into mysterious. I think aliens just get a much tighter script. It's a much simpler script, admittedly, but it's a much tighter script. Oh, definitely. Uh, whereas here, it feels like it needed like another three or four drafts at the very least to to well it down, just make it make a little bit more sense. Uh, just that kind of thing. Uh, I'm being really nice. I mean, I don't hate the movie. Like, there's, all, there's things I like about it. I, I, like I say, it looks gorgeous. Music's very good. From, from a purely visual aesthetic, like, I can enjoy a lot of it. Yeah. Um, and I like the engineer well enough. I like how he just starts tearing through people when he wakes up. He's like, eh, I'm piss off. Yeah. You, you yeah. Ants. That, was, that was fun. Uh, and I like some of the mythology stuff, but uh, it, the mythology stuff I like is more about the engineers and, like, you know, who are they, where are they from, and uh like that kind of thing i'm i'm not particularly fussed about the whole where did we come from aspect of it mm okay so you know the the scene at the start is really beautiful it's really all the other stuff but as soon as the engineer steps on and it's about the creation of like life on the planet i'm like eh. <laughs> whatever 
I, I think there's just something fundamental about that idea I'm just not that keen on. Mm, okay. I also, I don't, I don't really like that it it kind of connects the alien universe more to present day. If that makes any sense. Yeah, because like this is you know close to a hundred years in the future, but it doesn't feel that futuristic other than the space travel. Yeah, like the I mean, it, yeah, the stuff on the ship feels futuristic, but I mean, like, the scene at the start, you know, the, the one in twenty eighty nine when they're yeah. defending the cave, like there's nothing about that scene that I'm like, give them a laser cutter or something for the rock. Yeah, that looks like any archaeologist today could go and do that. Yeah, it really feels that way, uh, and be connected is so close to present day. It, it just it feels weird. Like, it, it, obviously, it's in the future. I expect we went through what we think of as present day before we got there, but it just it feels almost kind of alternate universe rather than. You know, where yeah. space travel's normal and all this stuff. Like, uh, like connecting it to the present day just feels weird to me. Mm. But then again, I suppose if you're mixing the Predator universe in there with it, then it has to be because the Predators come to come to present day. So that's, that's kind of fair, I suppose. Uh, I don't know. I just, I don't know, something... I, if I have to sum up my feelings for me, to something about it just doesn't feel quite right. There's, a, a, there's lots of actual complaints you can have with it. Characters, and I've well, spoken about that, the characters not adding up, yeah. uh, not feeling that they're very deep. Problems with the some of the choices it makes. But ultimately, if I, if I sum up my problem with Prometheus, is that it just doesn't feel quite right. Something feels just slightly off about it fitting in with these movies. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I just, for me, that wasn't, I, I enjoyed those thematic issues of, you know, like, where did we come from? Where you're like, yeah, I'm not interested. For me, that's mm. the side of the movie I enjoyed most. So... I'm just like, what is this philosophical bullshit and why is it in my alien movie? It's kind of kind of how I felt watching it last night. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, which is why I'm, I'm glad Covenant looks more like a monster movie. And I'm sure for some people, it's, oh, it's just going to be a monster movie where the alien picks them off one by one. Which admittedly means that it, it, you know, it will be nothing compared to one and two. Because I, I think that's the other thing for me uh, here is that I feel like everything in this movie... Now, obviously, it, it does bring in... It, this goes against something that I just said, because it, it does bring in this uh, these theological ideas about where do we come from. But other than that, it doesn't really introduce anything completely new. It, it, it takes things and teases things that we already had in the Alien universe. And in terms of... Uh, not even in terms of mythology, just in terms of... like. Uh, as a movie, in terms of what it does as a movie, yeah. where there's monsters coming after them, there's nothing new or interesting about how it does that. No, no, that's fair. I you mean, know, we've seen the pregnancy. We've... Yeah, yeah, it's seen the pregnancy. We've seen them be attacked one by one. We've seen all this kind of thing. Uh, you've got the engineers, of course, but like alien one by one, ten little Indians kind of thing uh, in the ship, right? Aliens yeah. introduce the military. It's big. It's war. It's more of a fight uh, where you're fighting back. Uh, but the problem since then is I feel like Alien 3 didn't really introduce anything new in a, in a big way as a movie. You know, it kind of tried to do the first one again in a prison. Yeah. Uh, some changes, but it was essentially the same kind of thing. A alien Resurrection was kind of a mix of one and two. It was on a ship, but it was more aliens, more action-y. Uh, I feel like this... I feel like for another truly amazing Alien movie to happen, and I, I'm, I'm not going to say I have the answers to what you do, but for a truly amazing Alien movie to happen, you have to bring something completely new to the table. That's why Aliens is such a good movie. It's such a good sequel. Because it takes yeah. the idea of Alien and it just does something completely different with it. Uh, I absolutely agree with that, which is why I think maybe Ridley Scott isn't the person that's going to do it. Because Alien is, is his movie. That's that's his story already. So it's it's almost self-derivative, whatever he does, without changing Honestly, it up drastically. Honestly, it's funny I brought up uh, Star Wars earlier, because I feel... It's not as bad. Like, I don't think he's butchering his own work like George Lucas did. But there is a kind of a George Lucas-esque vibe from this, like, where he's talking about, oh, I want to do another four alien movies that are all set before... Because he said the next one's going to be set before Covenant, but after Prometheus. I know. It's just getting confusing, and isn't I'm, it? And I'm just like... Really, it's like people always joke with me because I like I, I quite like Avatar. Like some people aren't as into it, and they like to joke whenever they bring up, "Oh, he's doing four Avatar movies. Oh, we'll ever see them." I feel way more a bit Ridley. To, oh, I'm going to do four Alien movies. Like, really? <laughs> like, what, <laughs> what, what? What ideas do you have? Because Prometheus that, that's it. that it's, I, I don't know what else he has to say in the universe. Because that's the thing. <laughs> enjoy the idea of introducing these themes of you know the, the search for yeah. life where did we come from but that is something new that he decided to tackle yeah 
But the thing but is, what like, else so, has he got? So are we going to get to like Prometheus or like the engineer's planet, and we're going to see like their civilization? Because at that point, I'm like, this doesn't really feel like an alien franchise movie anymore. If we're getting like, it feels more like a Mass Effect <laughs> universe at that mm-hmm. point. Whereas like, whereas with Avatar, like. Yeah, you can keep building that world. Like, I mean, the, the, sure, the story in the first one is really basic and really traditional, but he's created a whole world that he can explore. And if he's doing like four movies on his, like, I, I trust that James Cameron, whatever crazy plan he's got, he's got some kind of overarching thing that he wants to do now. He's cre- he's basically good. created his own sandbox and he's going to go nuts with it. Fine, right? I think there's a lot more potential there. I feel like here, Ridley Scott is being kind of derivative. He's, he's kind of like he's at that point in his career where he's not got anything else to do. He wants to do more alien movies. And I'm looking forward to Covenant, don't get me wrong. As a, I'm looking forward to it as a B-monster movie. I'm looking forward to having an alien killing things off and I'm going to have fun for that. Uh, but I'm not expecting it to do anything spectacular and new. And obviously I'm expecting it to look gorgeous because I've seen the trailers and it looks gorgeous. I've, I've seen one trailer and I will say it looks great. I didn't really get a big sense of the movie from the trailer. Like, just the one. Nah. It was just like, okay, some some stuff happens and then... It, it's going to lead to an alien. So which... so far, it looks like the alien's going to start picking them off one by one. So it's going to feel like another alien movie. Which, honestly, I'm fine with that because I like slasher movies. They're kind of the same all the time. If, if you want to give me like a, a sort of just kind of funny alien sequel, I'll, I'll I'll enjoy it. It's fine. I think I think it depends on how he plays it. Does he know it's just another alien movie and plays into that and has fun with it? Or does he try to do something new and completely different like he's done here, but try and do that in a, just an alien movie? I don't know. Uh, and, uh, you know what? Maybe he will shock me and we'll get something that's a complete amazing movie that does something fresh with it, does something interesting with it. But honestly, I'm, I, I feel it best case scenario it's going to be a fun monster movie. Okay, right. that's fair. That's kind of how I feel right now. I'd love to be surprised. I, I really would. Uh, but it just oh god it's it's so weird I want to do four more <laughs> yeah I don't, and, I don't that, get that's that essentially it's... essentially morbid but Ridley Scott's not a young guy I feel like f- committing to four movies at his age is a r- really saying you're going for an old age it is it is and I just don't get why he set out the game like saying okay I've got four more in the tank That that's fine I guess but then going Okay, and the next one's between these two. Feels like, and I'm pretty sure you said they're why? all prequels as well. They're all set before Alien. I'm Are like, they all prequels? Yeah. I like... thought. I thought. I thought the, the. I thought he was doing then another trilogy after Alien. Maybe I, I could have sworn it was all prequels, but I, either way, like, it, if it is all prequels, it's just kind of like, how how much do you want to tell before it? <laughs> like, it, it does this thing where you kind of. Like, there's a certain amount of stuff that is just kind of like, I accept this as backstory or I accept this as mystery. And by over explaining it, you, you, you take away from it almost. And what I don't want to feel like after I see some of this stuff is where, like, I want to just ignore this now when I watch Alien because it just ruins the feeling I have when I'm watching it. Uh, kind of like how I feel about Star Wars, kind of like how, uh, I don't know, this is kind of a different thing, but like how the Halloween remake, like the first half of the movie, is just all this backstory that the original didn't have. And it's just like, all you're doing is watering down what was there. Mm. I feel yeah. like, I feel like, part I just, of me feels like he doesn't understand why his old movie was good before, maybe, now, maybe his not. old age. Maybe not. And it's funny you mentioned Star Wars so much because obviously, if he does go right, this this second trilogy because obviously it's four movies, so it'll be like two trilogies essentially. Because that first one is between Prometheus and Covenant, so that's a trilogy, and then it'll be another one. If that's after Alien and Aliens, then you've kind of got literally got you got the original era, and then you've got the prequel stuff, and then you will literally have mm-hmm. a sequel trilogy as well. Here's what here's what I would do for a third alien movie, right? That's that's for pretend everything else doesn't exist. Even, even everything else can exist. You can still do this. Like this is not something that you couldn't do now because all these other movies exist. But here's what I I think, that, and I think I mentioned this in Alien Three review probably, is after Alien Aliens you get bigger again. To me, what you do after Aliens is you have the aliens not necessarily on Earth. It could be on Earth, but you have them in a city or a big mm. space station with a lot of people. You make it a tr- a big event where it's not closed off like alien closed off just those people aliens bigger but it's still closed off in the sense that there's no one else there not the rest of the world know about it but i'm talking about 
either on a big space station or a city on a planet, you have the aliens get out and it's a big cataclysmic event where the media knows about it. People are talking about it. I actually think that would be very interesting in today's world as well, given, you know, all the, the political stuff that, you know, a lot of movies reflect, and especially TV because it can do it a mm. bit quicker, and, and play up that. How, how does the media react to these events? Yeah, there's this monster that seems to be killing people one by one, and, like, where does it go to? And, like, the idea that you have to try and save an entire city, like, you go bigger, you, you do something more different with it, and I feel like that's how you make it something completely different. Because, ultimately, we've seen an alien sneak about a ship and kill a small group of people. Yeah, and we've seen them kill a, a medium-sized group of people. Yeah, on, on, a, on a sort of small colony in, in the yeah. second movie. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that's what you do and yeah I don't know how exactly you write that from the get go because it's different but that's kind of the beauty of Aliens is that it was different I don't think anyone after the first Alien other than James Cameron had those ideas for what where to go no, next and, and I think it's, it's why if you go back to our Aliens review it's why we said that's why it works so well that's why it's almost hard to compare it to Alien and say which you prefer because it took the idea but then just did something so drastically different that it's it's its own entire thing, whereas everything else since then has gone. Okay, let's do something of this, something of that. Where it hasn't gone. Let's just do something else. Yeah, uh, and the first thing is, is I would respect the, uh, the the whole where do we come from thing and like that side of it. If if they if they really if they really committed to that being the movie, but I feel like a lot of the movie is still just borrowing from Alien and Aliens and hinting at those things and it's sort of relying on a bit of fan you know fan service here or there uh, and teasing things from those movies rather than sort of standing up on its own whereas when you watch aliens you're not going oh this is just copying things from alien it's it's got its own ideas it's got its own thing it's doing with it uh so to me what you do with alien is you take the creature uh or a lot of the creatures and you put them in a new place that's bigger that will be a different story because the aliens breaking out in the middle of like New York and like gradually taking over more of the city. That's a story. That is something we've not seen yet. That is completely different to anything we've seen in yeah. the, the movies. Uh, and to, to me, that's uh, and that's not to say you can do something smaller again. You you could. There, there could be other things you could do that would make it more interesting. Maybe you do have like the xenomorphs with the engineers popping up, and you do something with that, or you like whatever but it's i think I'm, I'm intrigued to see what covenant is because i as much as you go oh it looks like it's just you know alien i don't think he's wants to do just that i feel like he's got at least he's going to try and do something more probably but the, the trailers certainly don't show that though the, the they, trailers they are, don't. are very much slasher movie-esque in the way they show them just getting picked off and they are, and I feel like maybe that's someone gone, hey, maybe Prometheus didn't sell because we showed too much of the other stuff. Let's just show, hey, look, it's Alien. Yeah, that may be the case, and I'm I'm curious as to how that will go. This is actually the funny thing. is Obviously, I was really hopeful getting to Prometheus. I was like, oh, hopefully this is like the obvious third best one. Like, like you know, like I'll come out going, Alien, Aliens, and Prometheus, that's the trilogy. Like That's the one I'll, I'll watch mm. with them. And ultimately, it's okay. I might even enjoy watching Resurrection a bit more. Oh, I definitely don't. And that that may be just a bit of nostalgia, but honestly, I think I think Resurrection doesn't stick out as much to me. Whereas Prometheus has these things that I don't like. Prometheus looks better. Don't get me wrong, uh, mm. it looks better visually, certainly. Um, but like, I don't know. So, Granted Covenant, I'm just kind of like, I don't know. Expectations are kind of muted because of Prometheus. And yeah, I, I'm just at a point where I'm intrigued. I'm like, all right, what what have you got for me to just like going and knowing? Okay, you got four more planned. What have you got with this one to justify that? Oh God, I hope. Now that you've said that, I really hope. I hope it's not just teases for the next things. I see if this ends on like a cliffhanger. That and it's like it's one thing if it's a cliffhanger that just feels like an extra thing on top of the story finishing. Fine, but if this feels like kind of like Prometheus does, where it feels like it all builds up to just set up more stuff, I will be pissed. Mm. This needs to have a conclusive ending for me. Mm, that's fair. Uh, for, for the characters, certainly. It needs to feel like I've, I've had a story that had an arc. Whereas in Prometheus, I don't really feel like there is like a story that has... Well, I mean, there is, but it's not... Like, she has a bit of an arc, 
but she's so thin as a character that it's just like oh, hmm. yeah and, and ultimately like you say because the, the the story that is there is tackling with themes you're not as interested in as as the other stuff kind of yeah. takes away from it for you because it's not as personal i don't care about whereas in ripley any aliens and the whole theme of motherhood and like having this new daughter to try and protect and look after to give her purpose like all of that stuff is so interesting because i care about ripley and i care about what she's going through and it's so well told and well seeded throughout the film as and it's more subtle yeah. than than prometheus prometheus is very upfront about what it's talking about but it doesn't actually have the depth it's kind of it's all surface level even though it like it would actually be way more interesting if they didn't talk about the stuff in the movie if it was just there as an underlying theme i'd actually be way more interested in it mm, that's fair uh way more interested in it. It's kind of like 2001 Space Odyssey. That's a, a lot of that's about life and where we come from, but I find it way more interesting because it's not flat out just saying it. It's it's giving yeah, you the yeah, ideas okay. and letting you come up with that. It, it almost goes back to the whole what you don't see is far more scary or mysterious. Mm. So the idea of just flat out giving me answers is not interesting, but just giving me hints where I can speculate and go, oh, maybe it's this and maybe it's that and whatever. See, for me it works because obviously... We go, okay, so the engineers created us, but what about them? That's even a line in the movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To me, the mystery of it is far more interesting than the answers. Of okay. some stuff. Uh, to me, like, you know, whenever a movie shows, like, heaven, say, when you actually show me a physical heaven, I just think it feels goofy. To me, the mystery of there being a heaven is far more interesting and fascinating in less goofy than actually just showing it. Once you actually just show me it, I'm just like, eh, this just feels like fake now. It feels like you've got some stupid guys in some robes in a cloud set. <laughs> like that, that is fair. You know, it's, it goes back to that whole thing, like, we're three dimensions, we can't envision what a fourth dimension is. You know, a two-dimensional yeah. stick man can't envision what a third dimension is. To me, that kind of stuff should be something we can't possibly even envision because it's outside of our realm. That's fair. And giving it a physical form that we can somehow comprehend feels like a... I don't know. It's, it's why something like the OA on Netflix works for me because it's so abstract. That stuff like that should feel abstract. And by giving it set answers, I'm just kind of like... Eh. Fair enough. I mean, There's no, no arguing with that. It's just how you feel on the topic. Oh, uh, dear. And... I, I, but like I say, it could probably work if I really cared about the characters and I really cared about them believing in whatever they believed in. Uh, mm. And feeling their crushing disappointment when it turns out not to be what they wanted or what they expected. Yeah. But instead I went, you've not made me care, so why do I care? Uh, uh, I was way more negative in this than I thought I was going to be. Especially, yeah, you, you were. Especially before I watched it, because I remembered and liking it more. <laughs> right. Uh, my rating has legitimately went down mm. since my first viewing. Uh, and I think honestly that may have been just uh, wanting to like it more than I I did no, that's fair uh, so yeah I, I, which I guess leads us to ratings I've, I've sort of I guess it does comfortably put us into that that spot what would you give this uh, a 10 then well I, obviously I agree with a lot of the complaints especially the characters but the thematic stuff worked for me and I enjoyed that so I, I, I give it a 7 because it like I say as well very gorgeous yeah, no. Uh, visuals, visuals, music, some of the engineer stuff is what I like about it. Uh, the, the the core ideas, the characters, which is maybe why I don't like the core ideas. Maybe the core ideas wouldn't even bother me if like they gave me characters who believed mm. in it. Uh, I, I think that's actually a big deal. I, I feel like I've spoken a lot about how I don't like the ideas. I think the I think any idea I can like if you make me care about it through the characters. Mm, okay. And ultimately, they, they didn't do that. So. Any initial thought? Because obviously there's some ideas that I would like without caring about the characters just because I like those ideas. If I happen to just like it, then I'll get into it a lot more. Like, I, I will put on any slasher movie just because I happen to like slasher movies. Whereas, uh, you know, whereas... I, that's that's kind of what's happened here with me. Like, I, I just like the idea of tackling this subject. Yeah. For me, you have to convince me in the, in the text, as it were, to why yeah. I should care about it. And they didn't do that. Uh Likewise, a slasher movie, I'll put it on, and as long as it's not completely terrible, I can probably get some enjoyment out of it, because I just like masked people killing people. <laughs> it's just, you know, just, I'm just thinking, using that as a simple example. You're a man of simple tastes, aren't you? Where, whereas, like, say, a Western... I'm not inherently interested by a Western, 
but there's a lot of really good westerns that I love because they're really good. Mm. You know, it's kind of kind of like that. Uh, as for my rating, uh, yeah, I I my ratings kind of plummeted since like I first saw it. I I, th- I think I'm landing on like a a five point five. Interesting. Out of interest. Where did you have it before? You know, you know, because uh, I know you've got your record and you could have checked. You probably updated it. <laughs> Where was it? Uh, I think when I first saw it, it was like a seven, seven point five. Mm, okay. And I think now I'm down to a five point five. It's quite a drop. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll, maybe because now I remember it better, I'll, I won't have the same feeling next time. But this time watching it, I was just like, oh man, this is a lot more tedious than I remember. Like. Yeah, maybe next time it'll go back up because you go in expecting the worst. <laughs> maybe. Anyway, but I think ultimately for me it's just not held up that well and it's only been a few years. Whereas Alien and Aliens, they like... Oh, obviously. Like, like, I, I gave this a 7, but it's it's I enjoyed it. It's good enough, but it's definitely not a great... It's not, it doesn't stand the test of time like those two tens. Yeah. I, I, I Honestly, I think, I'd think i be curious to see what you think about this in a few years if you watch it again. And like... Mm. Has it went down a little bit? Has it felt like it's not? Because I, I think on our rewatch, a lot of this is a bit more tedious because you're just kind of waiting to get to the good stuff, and the characters are not interesting enough to maintain your that, attention. That is possible, yeah. Uh, whereas at least the first time through, you're sort of discovering what's going on, and you're paying attention for details, and you're doing whatever yeah. else. Uh, but now that's Prometheus. <laughs> Let us know what you thought in the comments below. Uh, like and subscribe, all that stuff it helps us out a lot. Get us on Twitter at mail underscore fuzz. Obviously, we will have an Alien Covenant review up in the very near future once it comes out. Uh, that'll be a 1.21 gigawatts video though, because that's a new release. But uh, all the same, it is coming. So yeah, uh, so thanks for watching once again. Get us on Twitter at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates, individual Twitters. I'm at wibble89, Connor's at Connor Ryan 94. But that's us guys. So thanks very much. We will see you next time.